All right, today I'd like to show you my automated snake enclosure. Uh, it's powered by Arduino. Um, so let's look at the device itself. So this right here is the uh, the project box. I have an Arduino. Uh, it's hooked directly into a um, relay shield. Uh, it's connected to another relay shield right here that uh, controls the outlets. Um, I have a day, a night, I got a fogger, a heat lamp, and two heat rocks. Um, those relays also control the, uh, the fans right here. I'll talk about those later. Um, it's also connected to a, might be able to see it here, a uh, real-time clock. Um, so uh, what I did is I cut up an extension cord, hooked it into these outlets, um, and through the relay. So the Arduino will control whether the outlet is live or not. Um, also I have a few sensors connected in here. Um, they, uh, they tell the Arduino what the temperature, humidity is of uh, certain various objects, I'll show you later. Um, it's also plugged in right here, so it's uh, self-automated as soon as you plug in the, uh, the extension cord. Uh, so these fans right here, they'll actually turn on if the temperature of the enclosure reaches um, two degrees above the ideal temperature for ball pythons. Uh, so during the day, they would turn on if the temperature reaches uh, 87 degrees. Um, and then they'll turn off as soon as it reaches anywhere below 87 degrees. Um, so these ones right here, they blow in to pull in cool air. Whereas these ones right here, they blow out to blow out the hot air. Um, the ambient temperature is read by this DH22 sensor. Uh, that also registers the humidity level. So uh, if the humidity is below 50, it'll turn on. And as soon as the humidity is uh, above 60, it'll turn back off. Um, I also have this heat lamp, which is controlled by the... Uh, the ambient temperature. So as soon as the ambient temperature is below 77 degrees, it'll turn off. And uh, as soon as it's above 85, it'll turn back off. Uh, I have a heat rock sensor here with the temperature sensor attached to the base. Um, as soon as this heat rock reaches above 90, it'll turn off. And as soon as it reaches below 88, it'll uh, turn back on. Um, my second heat rock is right here in the burrow. This one will uh, turn on when uh, the temperature of the heat rock is below the ambient temperature, so 77 degrees during the day and uh, 85 degrees at night. Um, the Arduino determines whether it's day or night by the uh, real-time clock. So uh, as soon as it... Um, reaches 6.27 in the morning, it'll uh, become day. And as soon as it reaches 8, or uh, sorry, 6.36 uh, at night, it'll turn into nighttime. Uh, that I used by uh, looking at the sunrise and sunset of uh, one of the African countries they're from. Um, yeah, so the uh, humidity is, con is uh, in... Uh, is uh, controlled by this uh, fogger. Um, I also have the Arduino uh, hacked into the uh, um, float switch so that uh, if the water is low, it'll actually turn on this LED right here and uh, it'll also make the uh, fogger not work unless uh, there is water in it. Um, hmm. So at night, uh, the ambient temperature is going to be uh, anywhere between 69 degrees and 75. 
So again, that uh, heat lamp will turn on at 69 degrees and turn off at 75. And the fans will turn on at 77 degrees. That way uh, it keeps the temperature at the optimal level. Um, so that's it with the, uh, the actual enclosure itself and the Arduino. Um, I also made a Visual Basic program that will read the serial port of the Arduino and it'll give me the uh, date time, it'll give me the humidity, the ambient temperature, uh, the heat rock of the uh, top temperature, the heat rock of the bottom temperature, and uh, it'll tell me whether it's day or night, and it'll also tell me if the fogger is full or empty. So uh, it's another way to check to see, make sure that uh, the fogger has sufficient water. Um, I will be uh, posting a link to the uh, program itself that I made so that uh, if any of you want to make your own, it'll be a great starting point. Um, well, thank you for watching.